Hey guys, Molin here and pro gaming and esports is becoming more and more of a thing in the last few years and I decided to do some research on how long are you able to gonna be a pro gamer, like at what year do you have to retire and at what year do your skills decline. And to analyze that I have, um, I use a scientific paper and also like I did my own analysis on the top League of Legends teams from last uh, season's Worlds Finals and analyzed all the players and the ages. But first I'm gonna go with the um, scientific stuff. Now, um, university professors J.G. Thompson, Mark Blair and Andrew Henry did a study on 3,300 stars of two players between the age 16 and 44 to try to find out, okay, when do the skills, when do the cognitive abilities um, and the reaction time and the skill level decline. At what age um, can I see like a decline in um, reaction speed and so on. Um, and as the title of the, the paper says, it's over the hill at 24. And they say that um, um, they find that age-related slowing of within game self-initiated response times begins at 24 years of age. Would you have ever imagined that? That once you turn 24, some of you probably are like me are already above 24, we already suffer from like slower reactions than the younger generation. And to go in this analysis a bit, I mean, um, he was also talking about this aging decline and saying that some stuff can be offset with experience. Um, but um, the facts are real and the study, like there's a lot of scientific stuff that I'm just gonna skip over and go to the um, important things. Now in Stark of Two, in, if you don't know the game, there's kind of like in League of Legends, there's different leagues, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond and master. And the most important um, screenshot here is this one. Impact of aging on looking, doing, latency by league. And here you can see um, the response time in milliseconds. For example, that's logarithmic 400 milliseconds, 600, 800, and 1,000. And the lower, of course, the better it is. The lower your response time is, the more actions you can do per minute, the more actions you can do in a 20-minute game. It really like adds up. And what you can see here is, for example, um, the light blue here on the bottom is the master's level. Um, then you have um, diamond and up the way to bronze. And what you can see, of course, bronze players have the slowest reactions. Um, silver players are faster than bronze players. Gold players are faster than silver players and so on. What you can notice here is, um, first, there's a pretty big gap between bronze and silver. And there's an even larger gap between diamond and masters, which means the skill level between the average master player and the average diamond player is very um, big. Um, which is certainly true, but what you can also see is that at, no matter if you're a bronze player, no matter if you're a silver player, no matter if you're gold or platinum or even a masters player, all, one, they have one thing in common. All of those at around 24 years start to decline, they start to get slower. And what this means is, for example, let's for example, assume you're a pro in master, your grandmaster, you're somewhere here on this um, low reaction time, if you're really good at start of two, and let's say, um, um, for example, let's take Scarlett, a Stark of Two Pro, and let's say she is 40 years of age in 15 years. She's still going to be better than um, most diamond players or average diamond player at that. But is she still going to be good enough to like, compete with, let's say, 20 year old Koreans at that time that are 20 years old younger than her? No. Even though she has all that experience, um, simply the difference in reaction speed is going to be so big that she's not going to be able to compete anymore with the best. And that's really, really important to know that. Um, Already after 24 years of age, or maybe even earlier, maybe even 23, it's just like um, one data, but it could be different as well. Um, but the matter of truth is that in the mid of 20s, of your 20s, you're going to have those cognitive declines, those declines in reaction speed and so on. And um, in the findings, in conclusion, they also say um, that um, this decline can be attuned by expertise despite claims and stuff and they say experience nevertheless allows one to compensate for these declines indirectly. In our study all the players appear to hold their own despite their declines perhaps by decreasing the cognitive load through the use of simplified strategies or improved use of the game interface which means um, let's say if you for example are 30 or 35 you're still going to be able to play at a decent level because of the experience that you have. For example you know exactly what to do in which situations and you know um, for example to uh, maybe not multitask as much, but really like focus on the core elements of a game. And you can use those other things to like compensate a bit, little bit for the lack of reaction speed. But ultimately, like the best players are always going to be like young players between, let's say, 17 and 27 or something. And now I did my own analysis, and this is even more interesting here. Um, I analyzed um, all the top teams from this season's World Championship. I analyzed all the US teams, TSM, C9, and LMQ all the U teams, Fnatic, Alliance, and SK Gaming, and then um, Chinese and Korean teams. 
And what is interesting here is that the average age, the mean of all of this is 20.4. So the average age of a person participating at Worlds in the top teams was 20.4 years of age. Um, with a standard deviation of only 2.0, which means the average age of a person there was around 18 to 22, you could say. So that's where really the majority is. And you can really see here, I made a graph of all the players, and you can also see um, the mass majority is between 18 and 22. And of course, there are some people who are 17 and some who are um, 25 or 26. I mean, there's only one person who's 25 and one person that's 26 years old. And um, that really shows that um, the time in esports is um, very, very short. I mean, if you... Um, turn 24, 25, you usually have to like think about other things already, what you can do. Um, and this is also something that, for example, um, this guy here now, this is a famous jungler from, um, from, a, or from Team Curse, he used to be at least, and he stepped down. This is Saint Vicious, and he stepped down after he turns 26 years old. Now the question is that I can't answer, did he step down because um, um, he actually became uh, a worse player that actually had this decline in skills and was not considered to be like, the best jungler, one of the top, absolutely world best junglers anymore because of the high age that he had. Or alternatively, it could also be that, for example, um, he wanted to focus on other things. He wanted to have more free time. He didn't want to have to still like practice 12 hours a day in the gaming house and stuff. He maybe wants to have a um, social life or family life in addition. So, but in re in reality, it's probably like a combination of both things. Like first, um, wanted to change the lifestyle a bit, and second, um, decline in cognitive abilities and not being able to like. Um, be the very best jungler anymore for the team that he was playing in. And um, another thing that's really um, surprising to me here is, for example, um, I was looking, who are the very young players? Are the very young players like players that are considered to be not good enough yet? Or are those actually rising stars that are considered to be like some of the best players? Now, for example, if you have Bjergsen here or Reckless, two very, very good players from Europe, um, and they're both only 18, or they used to be 18 at the time of Worlds. And also like other players, like for example, Deft or Dade, considered to be super strong Korean players. They're also only 18 and 19. So it seems um, if you're between 17 and 18, you can already like outshine some of the players in the 20s. What was also interesting was I was looking, okay, who are the oldest players? Who are the oldest players who are actually 25, 26? Because there are few. So I was wondering like, who are those players that are still able to do well at the high age? And to my surprise, um, or it could be coincidence, but it turned out that it, most of those players, for example, we have Lemon Nation, 25 years old, support for C9. Then we have Nif, 24 years old, support for Alliance. And then we have Hart, 26 years old, support for Samsung Blue. Now, what do all of those three uh, have in common, apart from like having a high age compared to the other players? They all play support. Now, this could either be a coincidence, or it could mean that, for example, maybe support is a role where you don't need to have like the lightning fast re uh, re reactions or the best re reactions and best cognitive abilities and be able to really like play superior than anyone else. Maybe like a support player, you can like contribute to your team by, for example, um, a more strategic aspect, for example, um, um, warding more or keeping the team in control, making calls and organizing the team and leading, making decisions. Maybe that's a role where you can really contribute like that to the team other than like making the biggest sick or most sick uh, faker out plays. And that's really interesting as well now. The problem, as I said, is um, what, what's going to happen to those players like once they reach 25? Like once in two years from now, this, the current existing players are going to be shifted. I mean, this curve is probably going to change. There's going to be new players who are like right now 17 like Uzi or um, Imp or Pawn or other players who are really young and gonna dominate then. And the current players who are here, they're gonna be too slow. They're gonna, uh, maybe like St. Vicious, may, may want to have another social life or a family life. And that in combination with the cognitive decline of abilities might mean they need to do something else. And that's where Riot Games comes into play. For example, um, Riot Games posted this very um, criticized post um, saying that um, the career life cycle depends on the players and they pretty much want to like uh, help people like for careers after their professional life. So Riot is now working proactively to ensure professional gamers can have career longevity by creating summits that aim to teach programmers how to maintain their personal brands and how to behave in the public. Now this post was criticized by the League of Legends community um, saying that um, they are doing this mostly so that people behave in the public, so that pro gamers behave in the public and um, um, don't like talk shit or don't um, uh, flame in solo queues so they pretty much aren't bad examples. 
Um, and while I think it is true that uh, some part of this decision to have those virtual summits are for that, I also think it's also true in the other direction to really like try to help those people because if every um, League of Legends pro like goes bankrupt or has nothing to do after like his career is over and like sits then with no job and no, no company recruits him, that would be also like bad for esports and for the company in general. So I think they really want to help people and I mean they already did in some cases, for example, the Fisio used to be a foreign former, I think, support player for Copenhagen Bulls, I think, and now is a commentator, and they helped him to, like, become a commentator, which also, like, is a pretty secure job for him now. But the problem is that there are not everyone, not everyone of those players, like, once they're old, could, be a, could become a commentator. So the question is really, like, what are those people going to become? Like, maybe some are going to become game developers, but um, maybe some, like, are so good that they can, like, build their own personal brand. Like, I think, for example, Bjergsen or Reckless, they have a skill level so high that they... Um, don't really have to worry about anything. Like they can really um, build themselves as a brand, and even after they retire, uh, maybe like kind of like Ocelot that did. And yeah, but it's really interesting um, that um, at 24 years of age already the decline begins. Um, I was always feeling something like this similar because if you look at all the esports games, I mean some games they are different. For example, in StarCraft, the average age of the competitors is a bit higher, even though I think at the BlizzCon final, like the winner was like 16 or something. Um, I think overall, like there's still some players being pretty good Stark of two players at like 28 years. Because in Stark of two, I think you can compensate some of the um, decline in like really with experience and making the right decisions. But this should kind of be like a warning for uh, pro gamers that they always should think about what are they going to do in the future? Because you can't just be a League of Legends pro for 40 years. You can't just be a a start of two pro for 50 years or until you are 60 or whatever. That's just not gonna happen. And um, on the other hand, there's also some games, for example, Hearthstone, or that where the cognitive abilities and reaction times and so on are um, not really needed or have almost no impact. And that's why, for example, I think like players like Crip or Trump, who are probably gonna play Hearthstone for at least 20 or 30 more years, um, um, they not they won't have a problem with that because. I would more compare like Hearthstone not with like game like League or StarCraft 2. I would rather compare it with uh, something like poker or chess where even at an old age you can still do reasonably well. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something. Um, let me know your thoughts of course and thanks for watching. I'll be back.